they closed right at the 50-day moving average, like literally at the 50-day moving average. And it really does kind of setting, setting us up for a coin flip. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com weekend update show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. I uh, hope everybody is having a great weekend. Um, it's like Christmas, right? Opening day, well, official opening day of NFL kickoff today. Awesome day. I know a lot of you guys uh, just like me, I've been kind of really looking forward to this uh, in this COVID stage of life that we're in. It's like the little things, right, uh, that make us so happy. And I spoke to so many of my friends this weekend. It, it really is like uh, like Christmas for a lot of us. So uh, make sure this weekend, um, you know, this weekend, this Sunday, um, you know, definitely enjoy the games. Uh, go relax. Uh, I know again the pressures of life are you know incredibly uh, hard these days right just in just in general um but make sure again guys make sure uh you put in that work i mean if you're like me you're probably going to be on the couch today for a long time um you don't need to you know you don't need to sit there um you know listening to every single word the announcer says no matter what type of trader you are make sure you know you have your charts in front of you okay um, the more, you know, just understand this business and, and you know, I, I talk about this all the time, but this business is, is a game of failure. It's like baseball, right? Um, in baseball, if you succeed three out of 10 times, you're considered a hundred million dollar player. In trading, you succeed three out of 10 times, you're not trading. But the most important part is just understand this is a game of failure, okay? Um, you're going to be wrong. You're going to be wrong a lot, okay? Um, if you're a sensitive if words hurt, if you're a thin skin, I guarantee you, you won't be trading. I, I, I guarantee you. Uh, and unfortunately, social media, and again, I don't want to embarrass the platform, but social media is, is literally become uh, guys that trade three shares telling guys that trade two shares how big of an idiot they are. And it's like a roundabout type of game. And if words hurt, if somebody turns around and says, the market looks like it's about to confirm lower, right? And we'll get to exactly what we're talking about. And you turn around on the internet. You're wrong, man. You're an idiot, man, right? Words hurt. You're soft, right? It's like my, my daughter's uh, rec game yesterday. She had a rec soccer game. We were up 5 nothing, and the coach told my, my daughter to stop, you know, to stop going aggressive, okay? We don't want to hurt the other team's feelings. At some point, you got to grow up, okay? This is the stock market. Stocks go up, stocks go down. They're going to go up when you're in it. They're going to go down when you're in it. Get over it, okay? How soft do you have to be that if somebody turns around and says, hey, by the way, if the Q's confirm the bottom of the channel, we're going to go lower. No, man, you're wrong. You're an idiot. Go kill yourself. Settle down, right? You're soft. So forget about trading, okay? Grow the hell up, okay? The market is going to be here. Doesn't make a difference if you're in it or not. Stocks are gonna go up whether you're in it or not. They're gonna go down whether you're in it or not. The most important part to stop being a little fragile, little fragalina, right? Grow up, look at charts, understand technical analysis, understand that the market does go up and down, okay? Don't fall in love with your stocks. They don't love you. Again, perfect example. Tesla's the most emotional stock in the history of the planet. Nobody loves Tesla more than I do. Okay, some of you guys are so emotional about Tesla that you would, you would sell your kids to be right, right? And some of you guys just literally have started trading Tesla. We, I, we've been trading Tesla for the last three and a half, four years. And nobody knows how great Tesla is, both on the long side and the short side. But at the end of the day, it's a piece of paper. It's a vehicle, no pun intended, okay, to get you to point A to point B. The idea that you have to be so emotionally attached and tell another person, on the internet of all things, that they're wrong, it shows you not how smart you think you are, it shows how fragile and how weak you are. So get over yourself, right? Get over yourself, learn technical analysis. At the end of the day, you're gonna be right, you're gonna be wrong, you're gonna be wrong a lot, 
but if you put in the work and continuously put in the work, the moral of the story is eventually you'll start to identify the areas that you are technically weak and start slowly to omit them. Other than that, if you don't put in the work, I promise you, you're not going to be trading too much long, uh, longer. Uh, and it's so important to understand your deficiencies and cut them off uh, as quickly as you can. So let's talk about the tape, right? So we, the scoreboard, the scoreboard is the scoreboard, right? Nasdaq composite down a little more than 4%, um, the Dow down a little 2%, and I think, uh, if I remember what it was, that, if I don't even remember what the S&P was down, but the moral of the story is the market has been weak. It's been weak now uh, since it's kind of this blow off top here around the 302 areas on the queues. But the more notable part about this whole equation is kind of what we talked about the last three, four days. Um, if, you re if you've been watching this broadcast, since uh, since Tuesday, even since Tuesday, we talked about this line in the sand here. This line in the sand here is a very, very important area. Uh, there was, again, something that you can't really uh, have a discussion on. Okay, If you hold, you go higher. If you break down, you go lower. That's the moral of the story. That's what technical analysis is. And we're trying to put everybody in a position that you're thinking with your head. You're not thinking with your heart. Again, everybody loves a bull market. Everybody... Uh, is smart in a bull market, everybody's taller in a bull market, everybody's richer in a bull market, everybody's better looking in a bull market. But again, bull markets, okay, no matter if they stall out or stop, eventually are going to be a victim of gravity. And the first part of this whole move was just gravity, okay? And, and again, it, it, we, we talk about the day-to-day. -day. You know, I'm not going out, again, I've been saying this for, for years, I'm not smart enough. I, I don't know what's going to happen three weeks from now. I don't know what's going to happen two days from now. I don't know what's going to happen on Monday, and we'll get to the technical aspect of it. But what, what I do know is how stocks behave at certain levels. And the most important part is, if it looks like a duck and quacks like a duck, right, and walks like a duck, I promise you it's not a rhinoceros. It's probably a duck. And what we saw here in the last several days of the market was a very, very notable, okay, and noticeable area of a big, big buyer strike in the speculation numbers, speculation names that had a big, big run-up. You know, the Amazons of the world, uh, the Facebooks of the world, the NVIDIAs of the world, so forth and so on. Yes, was there pockets of strength uh, within these dead cat bounces? Absolutely, but we saw the one continued common denominator, stocks started stalling out at very, very specific levels. So, for example, even though we held, and, I, and again, this was the day I was 5,000% sell buys going to the next day with a confirmation, right, with a possible confirmation of the 50-day moving average, that never happened. Again, this is the point we talk about. You can be wrong. You can be wrong a lot as long as it doesn't cost you money. So, again, we waited for the confirmation. We didn't anticipate uh, but slowly but surely, we saw what happened next. And this is why, again, technical analysis is so important. The Qs got rejected off the five-day moving average. The five-day, again, continues to be the shortest-term sentiment you could possibly have. Again, I don't know why so many people won't recognize and acknowledge that the five-day moving average is important. But again, that's a whole different conversation for a whole different time. But slowly but surely, you started seeing things play out. And came Friday, right? Came Friday morning. Um, very, first of all, very, very aggressive week. Uh, if you traded beta this week, you know how incredibly aggressive it was, not only uh, to the short side towards the end of the week, but it was to the upside as well. Okay, Again, interval by interval, trade by trade. Again, we're not trying to figure out what's going to happen next week. Okay, um, But Friday was different. You know, you know, sometimes you hear this expression, this time it's different, right? It's usually... Um, it's usually a conversational piece every time, you know, it's like basically you're wrong for a long period of time and turn around and say, well, this time is different. Friday, we started seeing it was kind of going to be different, okay? So we closed the previous day, okay? We closed the previous day right here, right at the 270.56 low, right? That was right on uh, the 50-day moving average. And if you can notice, two days before, we closed on the 50-day averages as well, and we gapped up. So we got a gap up. Right, we got a gap up Friday morning. The difference between the Friday morning gap up and the and the what we saw the previous day's gap up after touching the 50-day moving average, slowly but surely we started seeing. This was very 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 clean. We started seeing after eight o'clock lower lows on the 60-minute on every single stock compared to. Uh, the day that we went up 650 points, the following day we touched the 50-day, things were taking out higher highs. So I turn around and say, this, you know, this time is different. And if you watched 
uh, the video um, on Thursday night, I wasn't going to put out to the market guides which way I was looking at, right? But I started saying, look, I'm not going to say which direction I'm looking at, but it rhymes with frown, brown, clown, right? Didn't want to tell the market guides which way I was looking at. So it was very, very important I didn't put that energy out there. I'm joking around, but it's the truth. So we started seeing lower highs coming in over and over and over again. And when you're getting a channel that's this tight, okay, and you're looking at legitimately two things, of, two pieces of information. Again, remember, trading is all about gathering information, gathering data. We knew we got rejected off the five-day moving average. We knew we closed on the 50-day moving average, and we started seeing lower highs throughout the pre-market. So these are all checks, right? These are all checks that the market it was not going to explode higher. And oh, by the way, if you looked, if you looked at every single chart of beta, the Amazons, NVIDIAs, uh, Apple, anything, Tula, Alibaba, you started seeing lower highs throughout the week. So it wasn't one of those scenarios that you turn around and say, well, I'm, you know, I, I, think, I think that we're gonna go lower, right? I think we're gonna go lower, uh, but just in case, let me get some longs. I, I, I don't think I had any more, I don't think there has been a pre-market time that I've ever put in 100% sell by shorts. Maybe one other time before. Maybe, I think it was maybe when we had a blow off top several months ago and we, you know, we had a, we had a pretty big waterfall. So Friday session, uh, Friday session, I was 100, 800% sell bias, right? I, I don't think, I don't think there was any more, um, I don't think there was any more room for interpretation um, I had all the data that I needed, okay? I made my opinion. Now it's just a, a series of events that needed to confirm. And the one thing, and I, again, I continuously talk about every single video. Again, it's not about being right, okay? Nobody cares. Not, it's not about being wrong. Nobody cares. It's all about being aware of your environment, okay? And being prepared for the worst case scenario. And the most important part, when I was sitting there, I always try to get a little bit of sentiment, right? Just from the idea of where, where retail is coming from. And I'm, I'm looking, you know, I'm looking at a, at a, at a, a, a social, you know, social, uh, uh, social media outlet. And everybody's talking about bears never learn, bears never learn, bears never learn, buy the dip, bears never learn. And I, I've already gathered all this information, okay? And, and I, my opinion was very, very definitive. And I knew right away, there's, there's a reason, guys, okay? When you, when you trade with retail, you're gonna get retail results. And, you know, trading is all about, you know, putting your opinion and waiting for the confirmation. And once, once you see, and you could clearly tell uh, these comments were coming from very, very new traders, like traders that were literally in this tape for the first like year, year or two, again, that never have seen uh, a potential waterfall. And the comments I made, I was even more, uh, I was even more put into conviction that this was gonna happen. And slowly but surely, uh, we had one of the more aggressive, um, really, really aggressive uh, waterfall sessions. And the most ironic part was, the, the big pull, right? There was a pull at the open and I caught Tesla. That was the first thing I caught at the open. Um, I fought with it a little bit, okay? It, I, I got it once and then it got me back and then I really, really got it back uh, on the co confirmation move into, into, rising, into, um, into rising support. But, but the big, big move uh, in these stocks, they didn't come, usually when you get a really aggressive flush, it's towards the end of the day, you know, after two o'clock when uh, wills are broken, people lose money, people are tired, especially on a Friday. The big aggressive pull came at lunchtime, came around 12 o'clock. And it was ironic because what happened next was even more ironic that we actually rallied back. And this was kind of the line in the sand. And again, if, we, if you've been watching this broadcast, uh, we talked about this in nausea for several days, this 50-day moving average. And even Thursday's video, I said, look, we get below that 50-day. Again, there is no room for interpretation. We're going to go lower. Okay, if the bulls hold, you're good. Remember that? You're good. You're good. The bulls weren't good. Um, market broke down, right? Market broke down. Uh, they took out not only the previous day low of uh, 270.56, they also took out the low of 269.56. And when I tell you this was an aggressive sell-off, if you weren't trading Thursday or just weren't around, around the lunchtime, you couldn't really appreciate how aggressive it was. 
But if, if you think about it, the Qs went from 270.56, right? The previous day's low. They went down $4, $4.5. You're talking about a $4.5 move within the lunchtime interval. Just really simply amazing. And you're, you're really not going to, to get a really good understanding just by looking at the 60 minute channel. But look at these candles. You know, if you trade the Qs and you understand a dollar move is a lot, right? Picture a four and a half, four dollar move in within an hour, within an hour of trading where most people went to lunch was pretty extraordinary. And if you look at the pivots, they were just literally one by one. Again, we were a thousand percent sell bias. Um, I kept on saying, I, I don't even want to, I, I don't even want to look at the long side. There's nothing that I want on the long side. There's zero. There's no reason. Sometimes you get so overly convicted that you can get FOMO, but if you have that overly conviction feeling and you let things play out, usually good things are going to happen. So let, let's talk about uh, Friday's session. Uh, super aggressive, right? Super duper aggressive. Uh, Netflix, and again, green to red or red to green, they're not pivots. They're not mental, uh, excuse me, they're not technical areas to get into trades. They're all momentum. So, uh, but a lot of times when you're about to test major levels, you could do green to red trades or red to green trades, depending which way the, the market is going to set. But it's very, very important to understand that there is no technical safety net. In other words, if you're shorting Amazon green to red, understand they could take it red, right? Take it down to two, three points and then rally up 30. So you really have to understand what you're doing when you're trading red to green or green to red. You have to have a very, very specific uh, area where the hell to get out. Even though I use uh, 60 minute channels to get into my trades, uh, it's very, very important to use the previous five minute high if you're short and the previous five minute low if you're, lo or if you're long, because if you get caught on a green to red move, again, there is no, um, there is no safety net, right? Because again, it's not a real entry. It's just all momentum. So every time when I put out, uh, for example, on, on, on the stream, you know, watch it for experienced trader green to red. There's always a very, very important area of technicals where it needs to build. And one by one, they started confirming. The only one that didn't work uh, was Boeing. And it was very, very odd because Boeing was, uh, I caught Boeing the previous day um, on the short side. Very, very odd. The stock is terrible, yet they held it up. Um, so Netflix green to red. Again, on watch note, this is not a pivot. Uh, 478.50, 478. If it builds below, can flush. Uh, here was Netflix, right? So here was the Netflix flush. Here was the 478, right? 478 and went all the way down to like 483. Excuse me, four. Uh, what number did I put in? Hold on, did I put in the wrong number? Uh, 478.50. Did I put in the wrong number? I might have put in the wrong number. 478. I might have put in the wrong number, guys. I apologize. Even though. I think for those who did trade Netflix, I apologize. I think I put in the wrong number. It should have been 485, but if you took the 478, it only went down a couple points. So I apologize. I apologize about Netflix. Uh, Boeing didn't didn't work. Actually, it didn't give you a second entry. Uh, 157, if it builds below, can flush. It only traded down to like 156 40s. Um, didn't make it. Okay, didn't quite uh, didn't quite make it there. And ironically, Alibaba didn't even confirm, not even close. But slowly but surely, you see all these names, they got murdered. Uh, Amazon, 3170 support, if it builds below, can flush. Here was Amazon, uh, pretty aggressive move. So here was, uh, here was the 3170, right? 3170 got just destroyed, uh, went down to 3083. Um, NVIDIA, again, green to red is not a pivot, blah, blah, blah. 46, if it builds below, can flush. Uh, here was NVIDIA, right, one by one. So here was the 480, here it is, 486, here, 486, uh, got down below 486, went all the way down to 475, uh, big move there. Uh, Apple got smoked as well, uh, 212, big area of support. Uh, if it builds below, uh, can flush. And that first move on Apple, it was like a flash crash, it really was. Um, if you look at Apple, here's the 412, right? Excuse me, held the 112 several times. You see this channel here? 112 here, 112 here, and it traded right to support uh, at 110 very, very quickly. This becomes obviously a big area uh, going into this week, this 110 area, so we have to watch that as well. Uh, Facebook, 266.50, if it builds below, can flush, 
right? Here's Facebook, here's the 266.50, that was a previous candle, uh, went all the way down to 262. Uh, pretty big moves, and considering you know, this came, uh, considering this came um, at lunchtime, it really did catch a lot of people by surprise. Again, in my notes were, I'm gonna give this more, the bears every opportunity to confirm today. If we still don't crack by mid-morning, then we'll start looking at some long-term ranges, but I wanted to really give these bulls uh, I really wanted to give these bears every opportunity to succeed. Uh, this was pretty good. I, I, I had a good trade with Tesla. Uh, 375 at builds below can flush. Again, experienced traders only. Not every single trade is for everybody. So here's the 375. Uh, let, me, let me show you the pre-market. Again, my e-signal is still messed up from, um, still messed up from uh, the split. So here's the 375 right here. And you can see this candle. Big, big move. And it stopped uh, right tad of 360 which was a very important level because that's the bottom here you see this th triple bottom here one two three four excuse me quadruple bottom so this 360 level uh becomes very very big um and again i know you guys are emotional i know it man from both the long side and the short side tesla's the worst tesla's the best just trade the price action again you don't need to go on the internet to tell somebody they're wrong you, you sound like a fool okay you sound like a two-year-old enough really you, you, you and the worst part of it is you're telling an experienced trader you're wrong at the worst level that you could possibly long or short. So again, we love Tesla, right? We love trading Tesla, long side, short side. Uh, Elon Musk uh, came out and said some big announcements coming. The funny thing is after he said the big announcement came, they actually sold the stock off $8. Again, everybody gets the whole battery event. It's cool. That's great. But again, price action pays much more than opinions. You see this whole area here? This is a huge area here, guys, going forward. Everybody see it? Right here, this whole area here. If this thing starts building below this area, then Tesla, I don't care what the battery day and the, the going to Mars and this, that, the other thing. And again, I love Tesla. I trade both ways. But if we start losing this range here, we're going to test the lows uh, of, um, of September the 8th. So again, I understand that you guys love Tesla. I get it. I love it too. But it starts losing this this range again. Held once, held twice. If it holds a, if it doesn't hold the third time, there's at least a thirty dollar waterfall in the stock. So we have to be definitely prepared for that. But uh, Tesla was good, excellent, app, you know, perfect on on Amazon. Uh, new lows, uh, new lows, and, and again, this is where the selling. Uh, so we got, so we we literally got that first pull, right? We got that first pull in some names. Uh, now he said, look, we need to see what happens next. And this was the big number, right? Any close under 270.50, it's a sell signal macro. That sell signal came right away and we traded down uh, to tad under uh, three, uh, 267. So really, really big uh, pull there as well. Uh, Amazon next stop, 311, it destroyed. Forget about 311, it went down to 3083. And I said, here's the flush. You know, here's the flush. Uh, um, you know, again, oh my God is right. When you get a $4 pull on, on the queues, I think that's a, you know it's it's pretty good saying oh my god, um, and that's it and that's it. So I think here's the tricky part kind of going into this week. So you got to give the bulls credit for one thing. They could have completely died down after they broke 50 day support. Uh, they could have completely rolled over and died and said you know what it's Friday who cares we're tired let them you know let the bears have their ways with us but. You had a huge rally, really, really big rally off the bottom. And the most amazing part is they closed right at the 50-day moving average, like literally at the 50-day moving average. And it really does kind of setting setting us up for a coin flip, right? A really big coin flip uh, going into a Monday session. And you know, as much as I had conviction for Friday section. I can honestly say I have no idea what's going to happen on Monday, okay? Um, and, you know, I put some longs uh, on the feed. I put some shorts on the feed. Again, you have to be uh, definitely prepared for both sides of the market. There's definitely some good-looking setups, uh, both long and short. So, for example, like uh, a workhorse, right? Workhorse actually looks pretty good, right? It held up very, very well. And if you look at the 60-minute channel, if it starts, you know, taking out this whole channel here, maybe it goes back to the highs. Uh, so workhorse looks good. Peloton, right? You know, Peloton had a big run, right? They sold the damn thing off. Okay, they closed it right at the 10-day moving average. If the 10-day moving average uh, confirms, it has more downside. So th there's definitely plays both to the upside and to the downside. But this is the one day going into tomorrow's session. I can honestly say, yeah, we could rally up 500 points. 
We could sell off 500 points. We, I, like, I have no idea. But you know what? That's okay. Okay, we're not pay, you're, you're, we're not being paid uh, and congratulated for having an opinion. We're, 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 we're being paid for having that opinion confirm and see what happens next. So the idea that, like most of us, and I speak to you know all my friends all the time. You know, we've been doing this for a long time. Most of us have no idea what's going to happen on Monday. Okay, um, and that's okay. Okay, and that's okay. And I am you know pretty certain to say I'm going to let everything play out in the first half hour. Uh, more chances than not, I am going to start my day probably at the first candle of the day at 10 o'clock uh, and see what confirms, okay? Because again, for the bulls to get really, and these are kind of the numbers for the week, and you want to really pay attention for the numbers, any close on the queues above uh, 275 is bullish, or at least the buy signal, bullish would have to clear out this whole supply here, but at least a baby step going bullish, right? So if we close above 275 on the Qs, right? That's at least a buy signal. If we close under 270 on the Qs, that's a sell signal. So you really don't have to fight with anybody on the internet saying buy the dip, sell the dip, you know, whatever the hell you want to do, right? You're an adult, okay? These are the numbers. These are the facts. You could take these numbers and, you know, be have use, useful guidelines where your next area of placing your bets or you cannot, right? But it's up to you. You're, you know, it's your dime, your dance floor. Everybody's an adult. Again, 275 bullish, 270 bearish, yada, yada, yada. It's all good. Guys, have a great, amazing trading week. Um, enjoy yourselves. Smile. Okay. We only have one life, folks. Okay. We don't get any do-overs. So the most important part is be a friend to yourself. Be a good person. Learn to smile. Learn to actually like people. Easier said than done, but that's the point. Guys, God bless. Have an amazing Sunday, and I'll see you all in the field tomorrow.